Greetings sailors and welcome to a Patreon supporter replay courtesy of Lusqualo here who is about to show us a belter of a game in the Minsk. Now this is very much one of the gunboaty ships at tier 7, largely by dint of the fact it only has 4km torpedoes, but the guns are pretty good. They are the Soviet 130 mils that have really good ballistics, decent fire chance and a pretty good rate of fire to boot. It must be said though, this is basically inferior to the Leningrad, the premium tier 7, which does actually predate this ship. I think it actually predates all of the tier 7 uh, tech tree ships, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're basically the same hull, the guns are largely the same, certainly in terms of the rate of fire and the, the shells, DPM, all that, but the range is a little better on this by a not particularly significant amount. Uh, I think the uh, speed, sea handling are basically the same as well, but Leningrad has better concealment by I think just over 200 meters which is not insignificant. This is one of those 6.8 whatever, you know, it is in decimal places after that, kilometers uh, destroyers that you find at tier 7. And uh, it, it also has 8 kilometer torpedoes, the, uh, the Leningrad. So it can actually stealth drop, so it, it can do both things. I think the only significant drawback on the Leningrad as compares this is that the Leningrad has a rather worse turret traverse but otherwise yeah the Leningrad's basically just a better Minsk <laughs> so one of those admittedly reasonably few cases where you can look at a tech tree ship and and the uh, the you know basically the same premium and the premium is superior. I think the only other one I can think of that's definitely that way still is the Murmansk, just with its AP shells and its uh, incredibly good rudder shift. It's literally destroyer uh, kind of timing rudder shift. It's like 3.5 seconds or something, which is probably about what the Minsk has. But, you know, it's still a squashy tier 5 cruiser that dies when you sneeze at it, so <laughs> yeah, there is that. Talking of the other tier 7s though, I will take a moment to say that I mean maybe this and the Leningrad can kinda more get away with having that 6.8 surface detection but there are a fair few of the other tier 7 destroyers with bad surface detection that honestly I think need to be revised, I think it needs to be lowered just because they don't cope well with either up tiers or down tiers in terms of out spotting things because pretty much everything they meet has got better stealth than they do unless you're doing something like a French destroyer with you know maximum gun range and who cares about stealth anyway. So it's it's kind of an awkward situation because normally if you're lower tier at least you can maybe count on having better stealth. I mean that's not true for all ship lines and, and all tiers but it's certainly true for some. Um, but yeah the tier 7s get kind of shafted in that regard because certainly everything that's higher tier than them, than them has better stealth because everything that's higher tier than them can mount the concealment module apart from of course the... Uh, is it the Z39? The tier 7 German premium with the 150mm guns that can for some reason mount the concealment mod in that slot but then you get ships like the Mars and the, the Blischkowice which uh, really could do with some love absolutely and even some of the 6.6km uh, the uh, concealment ships could maybe do with uh, some slight buffs to concealment. Anyway, that's enough about the ships uh, at this tier, you know, generally. It's just kind of a pet peeve of mine that uh, a lot of the tier 7 destroyers are just in this weird, awkward, ugly place. And this is a bottom tier game, by the way. I maybe should have pointed that out. But yeah, like I said, I don't think Minsk is one of the ones that cares quite so much, just because it's very, very fast. In fact, before the French destroyers came along, this and the, the Leningrad were kind of joint fastest with the... was it the Habarovsk? I think so. It was like 43 knots base speed. 
and uh, you know you stick speed boost Sierra Mike flag on you can go even faster still and of course now there is also the swift in silence commander skill for an even extra what was it eight percent boost or something like that so you can get your destroys to go really ridiculously fast if you want to hell I wonder if you could even break 50 knots you probably could Anyway, so uh, he's already just disposed of one, uh, two ships, in fact. Um, one of them was very low health, but uh, yeah, he's, he's also racked up a pretty decent, almost 50k by this point, and he's now just hoping to get a fire on this Degrossa before they get out of gun range. And uh, that's, that's really what you do in this ship, is you run around, uh, you use smokes occasionally. They're not very good smokes, but you know, you, you've got them, you might as well use them and you try and set fires on things that you hope will goof and only put out single fires and then they burn out. So let's see if that happens with this Rita Stickerosa, shall we? I will say, by the way, and um, I, I, I should say that this, this is actually my second attempt at recording this. So I'm trying to remember all the stuff I said the first time round because somebody forgot to hit the record button. But yeah, one of the thoughts I had the first time round was that uh, the not particularly good Soviet smoke screens in terms of their lack of duration, maybe there might be an argument to be made for giving them one extra smoke screen. So not as many as the Pan-Asian destroyers, where you have the uh, kind of short duration smoke screens, but also quite quick cooldowns as well um, but uh, yeah it would still give you a little bit of extra utility because if you get a situation where you are then out of smokes and having to run around in the open your health can deplete fairly quickly you can of course help yourself by taking survivability expert although I don't think the squalo has I'm pretty sure 15,100 hit points is the base amount of hit points for this ship so there's that FDG the Fat Freddy gone to the bottom, burning all the while, and an arsonist badge for the Squalo as well, so that's quite nice. Now they have to turn their attention to the middle, because while this has all been going on, the enemy team has forced their team away from the A cap, but despite the enemy team having taken the B cap fairly early, if you actually look at the ship numbers, this isn't actually that bad of a situation at all. This is not ideal it's not a situation that you want to let ride but if you can utilize the numbers you've got the concentration of firepower that you've got then uh, the fact that you might not have a majority of caps it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world and they actually do have more ships than the enemy at the moment. They, they do really need to maybe get the mid-cap just to be on the safe side, though. The enemy team does still have more points than they do, just because they've had the majority of caps for longer. Now, that USS Black has to be a concern, of course, because of its radar, but also it's a US destroyer, so in any kind of close quarters fight, the rate of fire and the turret traverse are also absolutely not to be underestimated but La Squalo does have this Benson close behind him so it's not necessarily a terrible scenario if they bump into each other. Also you can see the extremely slow torpedoes going past there, the, the, the black is known for that and uh, it's actually sometimes almost an advantage in that people don't expect them to be that slow and they react for faster torpedoes and end up oversteering or understeering and eating somewhere uh, otherwise they might have avoided them. I think it's a bit of wishful thinking La Squalo putting his own torps out here. Four kilometre range? Yeah, they're not going to hit anything. <laughs> if you can't see it then you certainly can't hit it with torpedoes basically. Anyway, they've got the middle and at this point, maybe Los Squalo actually could have used his speed and the fact he's got at least some allies within firing range to try and hunt down this USS Black because they are the last remaining enemy destroyer and they are certainly somewhat of a threat to both his teammates and himself. And instead he chooses to smoke up here and actually start pew pewing. But we can see a smoke screen that's now firing 
from there we go between the two caps there so that would appear to be where the the, the uss black has retreated to and actually lusqualo decides to put in some blind fire and get a bit of damage done there as well the benson however is going for it and so yeah he actually like i said maybe could have helped take out this enemy destroyer and instead it's just the benson going for it and uh, it's, it's unfortunately not going to end well for the Benson, but Lusqualo choosing to stay here in the smoke has given him the benefit instead of getting to fire at this Azuma, which is uh, one of the uh, super cruisers. Hey, that's, the, that's the tier 9, right? Yes, it is the tier 9. It's the one without the torpedoes. Well, of course, it'll be the tier 9. It won't be somehow a tier 10 getting into this tier 7 to, to 9 match because that would be silly. Jedi, that would be very silly. Anyway, uh, so yeah, he's actually going to get another kill out of it, which is awfully nice, and puts him very close now to a Kraken. Also, 75k, considering this has all been with guns, that's not bad. It goes to show how good these 130 mils can be. So we have some uh, choices at this point. He can maybe try chasing after the Turpits. Uh, there's the Colorado there who is still full health at this point and there's the Roma who is facing off against the Marco Polo and there we go the black actually survived long enough to uh, get to there but uh, Marco Polo took them out so the Benson's loss was not entirely in vain I suppose but it still might have been nice to have the extra destroyer at this stage given that they are now down to just a couple of battleships. Certainly having a destroyer that could stealth torp would have been advantageous. So, yeah, I think we can we can still put a little question mark over Lusqualo choosing not to go in with them and stick where he was instead. But, uh, yeah, it happened how it happened, and this is, this is how we've gotten where we are. And it's um I, I don't know he might actually have ended the game with one less kill if he'd done that although on the other hand maybe he would have been it been the one to kill the oss black instead of the the marco polo i did wonder there by the way if we were going to see a little bit of uh ship ramming action but alas it was not to be the uh, marco polo kind of failed in that drive by in that uh, well they sank and the other ship didn't but the Roma has been left on low enough health that Losqualo and the remaining two cruisers, who are neither of them particularly healthy themselves, can take it out. But this is still looking really close. They actually went from having a, a decent numbers advantage to now actually not so much. It's starting to look maybe a little bit tight. So there's the Kraken. That's another ship that's burned out. This, however, this was definitely a mistake. Uh, in his eagerness to keep pew-pewing at battleships, Lusqualo pops his smoke to replace the fading, uh, probably Benson smoke, and then suddenly realizes, oh yeah, nobody else can spot the Colorado right now. So that's his last smoke, just kind of wasted. Not entirely wasted, as we'll see, but it does mean that if he was to rush one of these remaining battleships, for instance, he now does not have at all the option of smoking immediately after he's put his torpedoes out. Because you really do have to get into very close range. I mean, these torpedoes are fast, they do good damage, but you have to be sure they're going to, to hit and if you go in with low health to start with you're probably not going to make it. It's the kind of thing you can generally only do once per battle. If you can set up an ambush drop around an island then that is you know fantastic. Although with four kilometer torps it's still kind of hard to do. But if you're trying to rush at somebody over open water you better have the hit points to be able to carry it off. So it does get the chance to shoot at this Colorado with the the smoke screen obscuring him so he can't be fired back at right now although maybe it would be a good thing if the the Colorado was 
trying to shoot at him or maybe that turpits because you know they'd be a little less likely to hit because as it is they've taken out that brindisi and it's now just him and the saint louis left and they haven't done a significant amount to this colorado and while this has all been happening the turpits and the colorado have had the chance to get much closer together i think lusqualo because he's He's clearly now, you know, he's decided, okay, I'm going to have to go in, use the torps, or we need to take out this this Colorado, and this is definitely a better prospect than the Turpitz, who has his own torpedoes that could potentially uh, whack Los Guatlo, not to mention better secondaries, although, you know, not quite as potent as they once were, potentially, but, yeah, um, he, he's doing the thing which is potentially going to cost him a bunch of his health, and he's now doing it at the point where these last two enemies are really close together and can potentially support each other. Although he's timed it such that the Turpits being behind the island means that the Colorado is still now effectively alone. But if he'd done this earlier, instead of turning away from his smoke, if he'd just made the run in then, he probably still would have lost this health but it would have been a much um, potentially safer proposition. It really is only the Turpitz's positioning that's kind of saving him right now. The Turpitz and the Colorado had been supporting each other a bit, bit better if the Turpitz wasn't behind the island. I mean, the Turpitz could still pop out at any moment. He might be reversing out, he might come out the other side. Bear in mind, 6.8 kilometers, you know, this thing is not stealthy. Uh, so, yeah, Los Gualo really just has to run the hell away now and hope he doesn't get spotted. So with the Salt Louis doing the sensible thing and actually capping, they do have enough time now to turn this around. They just need to not die. And there we go. He does briefly get spotted, but fortunately the Turpitz doesn't take a blind shot just based on that brief snap, uh, you know, that... that snapshot of a second, which that's totally a phrase, that he had of uh, Lasqualo's position. He could have tried to shoot, his turrets were pointed the right way, but didn't, and so now we're in a position where Lasqualo can actually spot the Saint Louis. And I'm presuming the Saint Louis is being sensible and shooting you know, across islands such that they can't be spotted. It looks like it from the minimap. It's not always easy to tell, but I I'm I'm thinking, yes, they probably are able to shoot without being spotted. Although it appears to be AP shells. I'm not sure why they wouldn't be firing some some uh, high explosive. Especially against a, a kind of frontally angled turpits. Anyway, all this has been enough to put them over in terms of points. And so, although this really could have gone either way, and although arguably Lasqualo has made one or two questionable decisions here himself, uh, he's still come out of it with six kills and 122,000 damage. In fact, it's going to be a little bit more than that because he's going to land these final shells. There we go, for almost a thousand more. So 123,000 damage done. Which is not half bad for being bottom tier in a gunboat with only four kilometer torpedoes. So there it is, Witherer and Kraken. And you better believe he's going to be top of his team with a result like that. That was uh, pretty, you know, that, that was really excellent performance. You could definitely do the same thing in the Leningrad. I think some of the other gunboats at this tier, you might be struggling a bit <clears throat> just in terms of, um, uh, you know, quite pulling the same result. But uh, yeah, it's 2.4k base XP. It's pretty damn good. Although the, the top two on the enemy team were also apparently really pulling their weight. I mean, that, that Bismarck, despite their detour down south, actually ended up with over 1,500 base XP on the losing team, which was almost as much as the person, in fact, the two people that were in second place on Squalo's team. So, yeah, that was a really hard-fought battle. And it's it's always enjoyable watching battles like this. I mean, okay, part of it, it's just, it's a fast pew-pew gunboat destroyer. Those are usually quite fun to watch in a successful battle, but just games like this, when it actually is really quite close, and uh, especially the contribution that Luskawalo then made. I mean, hoovering up half the, uh, the the kills of the of the enemy team, apart from anything else, is no mean feat. Um, yeah, that was, that was just a, a really entertaining one to watch, I thought. 
So hopefully you enjoyed this replay, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.